America, it is your time to get a brand new card. Sort of. He's kind of a villain. But you got U.S. Agent as the next card joining Marvel Snap. A 2-3 ongoing 4, 5, and 6 cost cards here have negative three power at the very specific location where U.S. Agent resides. And we've kind of seen this ability before in Man-Thing. Man-Thing's kind of doing the inverse. He is afflicting negative power to cards that are costing one, two, or three, and U.S. Agent is hitting the big boys where it counts. Uh, but is it gonna be enough? That's, that's the question we're gonna figure out here as we talk about some mechanics, counters, and deck lists that I've brewed up for you guys here today. But First, we do like to talk about the spotlight caches, and unfortunately, there's only one variant available for this card when it releases, and that is the spotlight cache variant. So you got that variant right there, and then you got Jeff the Baby Land Sharky Series 5 card, and you got Mirage a Series 4 card. Now, I'm going to tell you right away before we even get to the deep end of this video that Jeff is a must own card if you do not own jeff at this point in time in your marvel snap experience it is right off the bat worth opening spotlight caches to get him during this week I, like that's just the blatant truth he's such an integral card to a collection he's like a staple two drop if you're just missing one spot in a deck you throw in jeff it's just a good add and then you got mirage who actually is a bit of a sleeper pick in my opinion i have a lot of fun with mirage i get a lot of value out of mirage she's just a good card that ends up getting replaced in a few decks because there's other more synergistic options uh, for that respective deck so i think this is a very strong week for spotlight caches but the card itself that's being featured well, i don't know about that so you really got to look at what you own and what you don't own but let's get to the mechanics of us agent so mechanically i don't have a whole lot to talk about i mean yeah pretty much look at how man thing operates in the game and then you just apply those mechanics those interactions to this card it's kind of bumming me out a little bit i always like to dive into like how could this work with this card and this sort of thing but lately we're getting a lot of cards that are kind of just the same as existing cards with you know like obviously different utility different application here but generally the same effect on the board i, I want i want something that's gonna really like make a splash really change things up i guess we kind of had that with war machine but you know i want i want that next like high evo you know what i'm saying like give me give me that big awesome crazy effect so anyways regardless getting back to us agent um it's a reciprocal effect so you are going to afflict the four five and six cost cards on your opponent's side of that location but you are also going to afflict your own cards so you gotta be careful where you position us agent or your four five and six cost cards you don't really want to stack them in the same spot unless you're running a synergistic card which we're going to talk about soon it's also a temporary debuff modifier ongoing ability right we've seen this with blue marvel man thing like this has been in the game quite a bit but as a quick example if we play black panther at a location where US agent is, Black Panther will go from four power to eight power, then be afflicted by the negative three, going back down to five. It's not gonna afflict him right away and affect how much power is actually going to be doubled. That's not the case. It's a modifier that occurs after an on reveal is resolved or anything of the like, okay? And then lastly, for those end of game mechanics, I'm looking at like Invisible Woman, I'm talking, I'm thinking about like Martyr, Captain Marvel, these sorts of things, um, even, even Dracula in a roundabout way, but uh, they will still be afflicted after their power has changed. They've moved, they've been revealed, doesn't really matter uh ongoing still resolve at the end of the game it's like that extra final turn that happens and there's still some numbers to be calculated so us agent is going to lose out if captain marvel happens to move there and she stays at five no she'll go down to two if she makes that choice so some of the pros and cons with this card it's a solid final turn surprise i've seen a lot of people say like oh you could set this up and use it on the final turn if they've stacked like let's say they've only got one four five or six cost card then the net value here is spending two energy for six power 
more. And when you look at it that way, that seems pretty solid, right? Especially when there's upside to increase that even further. Let's say they stacked two four drops there or two six drops, whatever it is, right? We've, we're seeing that a lot right now uh, with Red Hulk and those greedy, greedy decks. Uh, so essentially, you can get up to, I don't know, like nine power, 12 power, depending on how many cards are facing the opposite side of US Agent. So that ends up being pretty decent right? Especially when you surprise them. If you put it out too early, then you're going to discourage them from playing cards there. So it ends up being a little bit better to hold on to the late game despite being a two drop. And that isn't to say that playing this on curve is a bad idea. Like it's perfectly fine to set that trap and let it stay there. But I'm just saying that the final turn surprise is where I see a little bit more value with this card. So yeah, afflicting, you can get quite a bit of value out of your two energy. It's also those greedy decks, like I was saying, they're kind of popular right now. You look at like even the Hella deck, right? You, it's gotten pretty big in popularity since Corvus and essentially they don't even have control over where those probably six cost cards are going to land more often than not they're probably going to land where U.S. agent is so the problem that I really have despite you know that seeing like pretty good is that a lot of the times those high cost cards are still going to outperform the U.S. agent so even if you took the Giganto the Magneto down three power there's still high power cards that are doing their jobs at that respective location. You have to find other means of getting over the hump to get more power beyond what they can output. So that's where it's like, this guy is not going to just solo a location for you. He's going to need some other help in winning that location. And it can't really be a four five or six cost card. It's got to be some of your earlier stuff. So it gets a little bit tricky in that regard. Uh, and on top of that, you're going to run into some matchups, especially in like conquest or anything like this, where us agent straight up isn't doing anything. Like let's say you're up against a surfer deck. There's like maybe one, two, three cards, like an Iron Man, a Sarah, where you could get that value. Don't get me wrong. It's it's a realistic effect. But then also you could just be like lined up against a brood location. And, th and then what are you doing? You're doing nothing. You're three power for two. And we can fill our deck with something way better than that. So it's like matchup dependent, which is always kind of, I, I, I don't love those necessarily as my tech options in my deck. Uh, and then also there's just other tech options you can put in that are going to be a little bit more general use and probably have bigger swings than afflicting negative power. Typically, negative, afflicting ne negative power, don't get me wrong, it can be solid. But I think we'd all agree that you'd rather probably destroy the cards outright or you'd rather disable their effects, that sort of thing. And sure, if you can manage to hit like Arnim Zola and get him to negative three, then that's great. But since we're hitting those higher, you know, <laughs> costing cards, they probably have decent power totals. There's going to be the odd Iron Man hit and whatnot, and that's a huge swing. That's great. But I'm just like, I, I see too many downsides and just awkward clunkiness, especially for a series five card. Like if this was series four, we'd be talking differently. Honestly, this should not be Series 5. Man-Thing, who came out in October, is a Series 4 card and has been since his release. And yet, and yet you have a very, very mechanically similar card being released, and we're keeping it at Series 5. That's trash. Should be changed to Series 4. This should be a Series 4 release. But moving on to the counters. So uh, pretty pretty obvious ones, right? It's an ongoing ability, so you can shut it down with Enchantress, which is actually pretty sneaky, right? Because Enchantress would typically get hit with the negative three power, but then you don't have to worry about it since you're disabling the effect. So that's a pretty great counter. Then you got Echo. Uh, if you play US Agent into an Echo lane, you're dumb. Don't do that. And it's going to get disabled. And then you're just going to be left with a three power card. So that's probably not ideal. Then you got Luke Cage. So Luke Cage, you're probably looking at Luke Cage and even Hobgoblin as amazing synergistic cards. And yes, I have them listed as synergistic cards later on, uh, but they also can counter this because it's a reciprocal effect. Um, whatever can work really well with US Agent can also work against it, depending on the situation and how it's played out. So that will definitely just prevent us agent from getting any value luke cage is just going to shut down all that negative power no matter where he is he doesn't even have to play at us agent's location anymore he can go wherever he wants and completely shut this card down some of the more fun ones though 
are uh, Polaris. So Polaris can move US agent away from maybe a location where US agent has been, I don't know, messing with your four, five, or six cost cards. It might not always work out because, of course, Polaris is random. So it's just going to be a random one or two cost card. And it'll only be 100% guaranteed to hit US Agent if he's the only card there, which is not guaranteed. So <laughs> a bit risky. But still, the idea of, you know, being able to manipulate where the US Agent is because he's a two cost is kind of interesting to me. As well as Spider-Man, I guess you could look at as another way of moving this card away. Uh, and then lastly, uh, I'll talk about Hobgoblin later, but we got Lady Deathstrike. So Lady Deathstrike would be afflicted by that negative three power, but she can actually destroy US Agent because she has more power. She's got that four power over his three, destroying him. And because the Honor Veal would afflict first or occur first in the instance, uh, Lady Deathstrike should, I'm pretty sure on this, destroy the US Agent then the debuff would happen, but it's not going to happen because he's destroyed. So on review first, ongoing second, Lady Deathstrike wins the duel. Okay, let's get to the deck list. So some of the key synergies, okay? So we already talked about Hobgoblin. That's a pretty great one. You uh, throw over the Hobgoblin at the US Agent location. It's going to go from negative eight to negative 11. That's amazing on top of, you know, anything else we can possibly afflict as well. And then you got Cerebro. I, not directly a synergy, but I think one of the best homes for you US agent is Cerebro 3, <laughs> which is pretty sick. And uh, so I'm putting them up there as a synergy. And then you got Luke Cage. Obviously, uh, we don't want to afflict our own card. So if we got Luke Cage on the board, great. Going to stop that from happening. Sarah is fantastic because we can discount US agent to being a 1 3. And then if we afflict something, that's like a 1 6. Very good value on that final turn surprise, like I was mentioning. And then the last one, which I think is really, really good, is Valkyrie. So you could. Uh, you know, smack a lane with Valk and then US at, at the US agent location. And then if they go down to three, like a six drop goes down to a three or four drop, five drop, whatever, then the US agent's going to afflict them to zero. That seems spicy, man. That seems spicy. So let's put them all together almost into a deck called Agent 003. <laughs> so a uh, little spin on uh, 007 there. But uh, yeah, this is basically a Cerebro 3 deck. The idea being that we can use Valk to do that big swing, like I was saying, or that Iron Man with Cerebro and Mystique for the Bass play. Bass gives us all that bonus power, getting us to three, as well as Magic, as well as Wasp. I'm actually splashing in Wasp here, which might seem a little bit odd, but I just really like it for the prospect of using with Valk, Iron Man, um, or Bast. Any one of those is going to work well with Wasp. It's just going to help us out, be a free play, get power on the board. You got Crystal, actually, just the draw to make it a little bit more consistent. Magic to extend the game. Ravona to discount some of these cards if we do not uh, have Bast you know, increasing their power. So it's kind of an and an or. It's kind of a it's kind of a one or the other situation. And then you got Sentinel just to get a bunch of three power cards out there. Jeff, because he's one of the best cards and actually in the spotlight caches. So if you open up a bunch and get these cards, then it could work really well for you. And yeah, I think that deck is going to be really good, actually. It, it, the only problem that it has, and maybe you want to take something out to tech in Shang-Chi. You got to watch out for those high power cards that are just going to not care about necessarily being hit with US Agent or out power, out tempo, anything that we can actually do with this deck. So the next one is Junk Nation. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry about the name. I just thought it was too funny and I couldn't help myself. Uh, please don't come and raid my igloo. So we got the Hood, Nebula, US Agent, uh, hazmat all the toxic stuff man I'm, I'm trying to i'm trying to afflict everything on your side of the board uh, man they even uh, a century a nihilist to throw over the hood which actually is a really good play so you sentry on four it creates the the void then you a nihilist over the void and then on the final turn you use a uh, u.s agent to further afflict the void so that's pretty good. But the only thing about that is usually you've won the location with the void regardless. Like just that swing alone is, is strong enough. And uh, and then if they happen to destroy it, then it doesn't even matter if we play US agent or something. So, But still, you can see the value there. And then the hobgoblin play, the green goblin play, just a lot of affliction, a lot of stuffing, a lot of junk. And that's what I'm going for with that deck. And the last deck that I have for you here today is US Monkey. I think this would be pretty sweet. Uh, you know, we have, we've had a lot of these cards change recently so i'm looking at angela 
as the new Angela, going to work in tandem with that Elsa Bloodstone when she was changed a few weeks back. Uh, and Kitty Pride, that's just a really good trio right there. And I think that US Agent is actually going to be helpful to afflict those high power cards, the, our opponent's big plays at the end of the game. We also have Shang-Chi to keep those in check as well, just in case. Uh, Sarah to make everything cheap so that we can play a bunch of stuff on the final turn. Hit Monkey to get a bunch of value from everything being cheap and already cheap, and then we can play a bunch of cards, with like the Mysterio, for instance. And there's really not a lot of cards that we have in our deck that we have to worry about being afflicted by US Agent. A little double agent action there. The only ones being Shang-Chi, but if we're playing Shang-Chi, the value's probably already been had through his effect. And Sarah, which I guess you'd have to watch out not to play US Agent there. So I think actually all these decks have potential. But the thing about these decks is they already have potential without US Agent. You could pretty much put in a lot of other substitutions and they'll effectively have the same cube rate win rate than they would with US agent. He's not making that much of a splash, which means we have to decide if this is a snap or a pass. US agent is a pass. I just don't see this card being worth 6,000 tokens, being worth even spotlight caches. Now, big asterisks here. Like I said at the start of the video, if you do not own Jeff, go for it. But I think in just about every other instance, pass don't do it don't use your spotlight caches and if you're wondering how many should i use if i don't own jeff always four anytime you're going to open spotlight caches do it in batches of four every time so yeah i just don't think he really has what it takes he's boring in my opinion we've already seen this effect i just don't care to have this in my collection i would have fun with the card maybe like for like one or two days and then i'd probably just move on and start doing something else i don't think he's going to be a meta breaker game changer uh it's just yeah i'm not too high on this card i think out of all the cards this month this is the easiest to pass on and hey i could be completely wrong and this could be an absolute banger but I doubt it. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for watching, everybody. Let me know what you think about US Agent in the comments below if there's something that I missed or any questions you have regarding the mechanics. I'd be happy to help. And anyways, I'll catch you guys next time.